So, the CTE is returning to Battlefield 1 with quite a big bang. I was starting to lose hope that Battlefield 1 would get any more updates at all after quite a long break from the Apocalypse DLC that launched back at the end of February, with next to no news whatsoever coming out between then and now. But earlier today, Jacob Ashmal, QA manager at DICE Stockholm, he tweeted that the CTE would be returning, and he's now confirmed that brand new weapon variants are being added to the CTE for testing, alongside a reworked Volga River map in operations mode. Way to make a comeback. Okay, let's check out this weapons list then. The following eight new weapon variants will be tested in the CTE, and they present us with some fairly good offerings. First of all, we have the Ribeiro's 1918 Optical, and this is something that myself and quite a few others have been asking to be added into Battlefield 1 for quite a while now. I think it makes perfect sense considering the weapon is already quite accurate and is one of the SMGs that can reach the furthest with its included bipod. DICE has said that by adding the lens sight on this variant, thus making it an optical variant, they've tweaked it to make it more accurate during aimed fire, but they've added balancing features like increased spread and slower recoil recovery. We then have a series of new patrol weapons to investigate. This is a new naming structure that we haven't seen before. The first of these variants is the M1917 Patrol Carbine. This will be the first assault class weapon to feature a mid-range scope that will offer improved accuracy at the expense of worse hipfire accuracy. And if any of you have played through Battlefield 1's single player campaign, you might recognise this variant having made a few appearances over there as well. Then we have the Arasaka Patrol variant. This comes equipped with a scope and offers improved accuracy while moving, making it like other carbine variants in the game. And lastly, the Carcano Patrol Carbine again mimics the Arasaka, adding a scope for greater accuracy whilst moving. Four more variants to go, the first one the Shogren Shotgun, this time a slug variant of the shotgun, an interesting choice considering its high rate of fire. It also comes equipped with a lens sight just like the Model 10A slug variant to get the user a little bit of a helping hand at those long range shots. Then, this is really interesting, we have the Machine Pistol added with the Turning Tides DLC, that's getting an experimental variant. Another variant that I didn't expect whatsoever. This will see the weapon get a new trigger group, giving a two round burst fire mode with an extremely high 1200 round a minute rate of fire. Obviously that's theoretical, there's no way you'd be able to tap the button quick enough to get 1200 rounds a minute, plus you have to reload and it's only got 16 bullets I think in its internal magazine, but is anyone thinking this is like a World War One AN-94? I'm certainly getting those vibes. It'll also come with a lens sight and that makes it more accurate than the Storm variant that's already in the game, but it will be a little bit more difficult to control if you tap fire it too quickly. Trust me, I tried it. It's just ridiculous to try and control. We're also getting an infantry variant of the Ross Rifle, plain and simple, it's just had its marksman scope removed, and now we've got another infantry variant we can play with. And lastly, this is definitely my favourite in the list, we're getting a suppressed weapon in Battlefield 1 multiplayer. This is the M1917 Enfield Silenced variant. This is the first suppressed weapon to make its way into Battlefield 1 multiplayer nearly 18 months after the launch of the game. This variant doesn't come with a bipod like many other sniper rifles do. That's because the suppressor is on there and you cannot attach a bayonet to the weapon either. You do get a high powered scope. So you've got 6, 8, 10 times zoom, but no bipod to help you behind cover and no bayonet charging for you. Now, I've managed to play with all of these variants this evening on the CTE, only for about 5 or 10 minutes with each of them, just because I wanted to make this video and let you guys know that you can go and test them if you want to. I will say that I think these guns add a more unique flavour, I should say these gun variants add a more unique flavour than the entirety of the Apocalypse DLC weapons that were supposed to be unique and brutal. I would argue that a lot of them just didn't really pack the punch that the community wanted. These new variants spice things up a hell of a lot more and they were very interesting to use.
However, if you're thinking of trying to jump into the CTE to go and test these this evening, only PC players will be able to do that. Console users will have to wait a little bit longer before the CTE returns. There won't be a console session for this test at all, and unfortunately there isn't any reason given on the Reddit post as to why that is. Sorry console guys, but it looks like you're just going to have to watch footage on YouTube to see what this stuff is about. Hopefully there'll be another test in the future that you guys can take part in, and I really hope that the CTE launches again for consoles too. Now, alongside these new weapon variants, we're also testing an update to the Volga River map as part of the Red Tide operation. This test specifically will focus on making the map a little bit of a fairer battle than what it currently is. The B flag in the first sector is being increased in its capture size to cover in the house that sits at the front of it, and this is to give the attackers a little bit more cover to hold the point. At the moment there is very little cover for the attackers at all, and they can't really hold the point once it's been captured. It's very easy for the defenders to retake it almost directly from their own spawn, so by making the flag size bigger, the attackers can sit behind cover and hold the objective, and people can spawn on those players as well and provide more help if needed. There are also a couple of changes to the spawn timers for the tanks in sectors 1 and 2. The attackers are having their timer reduced from 90 seconds to 60 seconds, so the tanks will be coming in quicker, and defenders have had their timer increased from 90 to 180 seconds. That's 2 minutes per tank if it gets destroyed. And the spawn point for the second attacking tank in the first sector, that's been slightly moved over behind the train down by the river. And I say they're doing that because they want to have one tank attack one flag and the other tank attack the other flag. These changes apparently are to allow the attackers to sustain their momentum and give them confidence to push forward with more rapidly spawning tanks. The defenders have to protect their tanks as the spawn timer has now been doubled on the first sector. And lastly, for the Volga River changes, there's been a couple of new spawn points added for the attackers in their HQ within the first row of the trenches as they run towards the first two capture points. These have been added because there is a 190 meter run from one of the spawn points in the HQ currently to the B flag. DICE are trying to eliminate that, so by adding a couple of closer spawn points, DICE hopes that they can get more people rushing the B flag more regularly. And alongside all of that testing, DICE has some fixes as well. The Hellfighter 1911, the Red Baron P08, the Lawrence of Arabia SMLE and the Doughboy 1911 skins will now properly show their skins in the customization screen in the front end UI. The incoming slash nearby medic list that's been moved over to the right hand side of the kill card so it's closer to the skip revive button. Hopefully more people will stop skipping revive and if somebody has now spotted you, the whole element of the UI will light up in green to let you know somebody on their way to try and revive you. And lastly, if you cancel matchmaking when using join any operations in the operations globe, you'll actually get back to the globe again rather than getting stuck. Now that is quite a lot of stuff to test and as I said, this is all live this evening on the CTE to be tested, but only for the PC platform. Now, one more thing that I wanted to mention, and I saw Jacob mention this on Twitter. He said there is now only a very small team left working on Battlefield 1, and it's safe to assume that most of the other developers have now shifted to Battlefield 2018. That's only natural. As it gets closer and closer to launch, more developers are needed to polish the game and get it ready. However, I do just want to say to the people still working on Battlefield 1, a massive thank you to, to all of you because there are so many people out there today that are going to be happy because of you. People like you staying behind to help support the game that we've been playing for the last 18 months, the game that makes us laugh, the game that makes us cry, the game that makes us really, really angry sometimes, but we still love playing it anyway. Thank you to the team that's remained behind so that we can still get a little bit more content and a little bit more life out of Battlefield 1 as we move towards Battlefield 2018. It's awesome to see the game still updated at this point. 
So there we are, the headline feature. Eight new weapon variants coming to Battlefield 1, and as I said in the video, they might as well be eight unique weapons because they're sure as hell gonna offer a lot of flavor into Battlefield 1. Now we're basically into this extended support phase. Let me know what you think of all these new weapon variants being added down below in the comments section, and I'll be there reading some of those thoughts as well. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.